Hi friends! Welcome to the great outdoors. Today for Professor Jackie's picture book summer camp activity, I'm going to share with you a book that takes us outside. It's called The Hike by Allison Farrell. Have you ever gone on a hike? Especially now that we can't go too many places. This is a great time to go on a hike or even just explore the park or your backyard and look carefully. That's what we're going to find out that these three friends do together. Yoo-hoo! Almost ready? Just one more minute. Just a few more feathers. See, she's collecting feathers. We are going on a hike. Ren, L, Hattie, Ooh, and their dog, Bean. And the illustrator even labeled some of the items in nature for us, like a red fox and a chipmunk, and a Stellar's J feather, lupin flowers around the sign that says Buck Mountain, bumblebee, It's our favorite thing to do. Shook, 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 shook. The Stellar's J is calling. Here's some, here's a knot hole in a tree and inside are some barred owls. And way down here, where these mushrooms are in a circle, whenever mushrooms, wild mushrooms grow in a circle shape like that, people call it a fairy ring. <clears throat> Hey, wait for me. In the beginning, we run like maniacs. We have all sorts of energy and excited. Until a ripe patch of thimbleberries slows us down. Oh, they found those berries and they know that they're okay to eat. They checked. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's a Western toad, a Douglas fir bow, L teaches us how to make leaf baskets. Here's Ren's sketchbook. Leaf baskets, L's instructions. Find one big leaf with five tips. Poke the stem into the opposite leaf tip. And then tip by tip, poke leaf tips with stem. Pack with berries. That's a very delicate leaf basket. Like this, L? Yep, see they're making them. Tap, 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 tap. It's a pileated woodpecker tapping on a hollow tree with carpenter ants crawling up the side. We may have eaten too many berries. Is that possible? And there's their dog Bean barking, Erf! at a turkey tail, mushrooms, and a little chipmunk going into the hole of a tree that's fallen over. They call this a nurse log. I thought we were saving some of those berries for later. The hike gets steep and the trail narrows. When there's a hole in the tree, it's called a hollow tree. Here goes a porcupine. Boo! Ack! Hattie! How did you get up there so fast? They're still making their way to Buck Mountain. Remember the sign was pointing this way? Oh, we get lost. Hmm, which way is north? They're looking at a map. Pretty sure we're not supposed to cross a river yet. Uh-oh. Did we go left after the berry patch? Right, I think. Wren, what's another word for blue? Azure, cerulean, cobalt. Wren's sketchbook. Hattie always finds the route. That's a compass pointing north. And here's a bird's eye view of Hattie. So she's looking down. It's Wren looking down at Hattie in her sketchbook. So she's drawing the top of her head and the map she's looking at. 
We call that a bird's eye view. Most maps are drawn from a bird's eye view as if they were a bird flying in the sky and looking straight down. Oh, we're halfway there. In no time, we get back on track. Well, speaking of tracks, who made these, Ren asks. A deer walks past. Bean sneezes. Achoo! Hmm. The deer vanishes so quick we wonder if it was ever really there. A light rain comes and goes. The birds are happy. We listen to them chirp and chatter in the trees. This is the river we were looking for, right, Hattie? Yep. Here's some more from Ren's sketchbook. Birds we saw at Whitefish River. Anna's hummingbird, a mountain chickadee, a mountain bluebird. She's sketching in her notebook. Hattie gets tired. Elle offers to carry her. We can't hear you. I said 30 minutes to the top. Ooh, that's a banana slug. They're walking below a plunge waterfall. There they go. Soon Elle is tired too. So they all climb on poor Ren. Giddy up, I can't do this much longer. Good thing Ren is strong. They ride over everyone. Oh, it's getting chilly. The further up the mountain top they go, the cooler the temperature gets. At the top, Ren takes out her flag. Elle reads her poem, and Hattie releases feathers into the wind. That's what those feathers she was gathering on the first page, remember? We did it! That's awesome. And here they come back down the mountain as the sun is setting at the end of the day. By the time they get home, it's dark and you can see the stars in the sky and some constellations that they make. Perseus, Taurus, Orion, Pegasus, And look, we get to see more notes from Wren's sketchbook. Some things I saw today, barred owlets. Hattie says barred owls sound like, who cooks for you? Who cooks for you? Oh, Psst. why does she keep asking? No one ever cooks for us. A Stellar's J, they're smart, noisy, they're in the Corvidae family, along with crows, ravens, magpies, and jays. Oh, and they saw some dead trees, and they think of them as giving life support. Remember that nurse log that was laying on the ground? It says a nurse log is a horizontal dead tree. A nurse for young trees and other wildlife, because they can all grow from them. And then, when you have a tall, a empty tree, hollow tree, like the woodpecker was pecking on in the, on their hike, they call that a snag. A snag, a vertical dead tree, also supports wildlife because that's where the woodpecker finds bugs to eat. Oh, some more things that Ren noticed in her notebook. When bees swarm, bzzz. oh, different plants, quick spreading, fast growing, world dominating for invasive plant awards. They grow so fast they take over. All sorts of interesting observations that she made along their walk. 
<gasps> a vanilla leaf, she noticed. Another plant called a horsetail. Redwood sorrels. She talks about those thimble berries they found. Thimble berries are named after the thimble, a metal cap worn to push a needle through fabric while sewing. She says thimble berries are too delicate for packing and shipping, so you are not likely to find them in a store. Some of the animals that they might have seen. Whenever there's a bunch of trees together, it's called a stand of trees. different cloud formations. Good thing she had a notebook with her so that she could record everything she saw. You know, when you go out on your own into your backyard and you take the time to really notice different small insects or different critters like chipmunks or squirrels running around your yard, maybe a rabbit, or you go on a walk somewhere with your caregiver, your parents, and you start to notice mushrooms growing in a ring and call it a fairy ring or other interesting plants, you'll want to have a notebook with you too so that you can record what you see. Here's a quick way to make one. I started by noticing empty boxes I could, con could make into the cover of my notebook. So this used to be a frozen pizza box, but you could do a cereal box or any other box. And if you take the cover of the box and cut it, fold it in half so that you're gonna cut it into two pieces, two equal pieces, you'll make them about the size of a half a sheet of your computer paper. And so for these, I also just folded them in half And when I unfolded them, that crease became a line for me to guide my cut with my scissors so that I could be sure the paper was folded, was cut into two equal halves. And if you take about five pieces of paper and cut them in half, then you get 10 pieces of paper all together. And now you can put them in between the covers of your heavier cardboard from that pizza box or cereal box that you cut out and you have all you need for a book. But how are you gonna put it together? Well, if your mom or dad or caregiver has a hole punch, they could take the covers and I put the, the uh, printed side facing in because then I can decorate my covers how I want. And I line them up and then I cut holes in them. I'm just going to cut two holes. One, and the next one I'll put about here. Two. Now, I can take my paper and line it up with the holes. You see how I can see my paper? And now I'll know where to make my holes in the paper too. Just like that. So I'll take little groups of papers and do them a few at a time because it's hard to punch through all the pages at once. And so I'm going to put my my printed side facing in, line these up, and now comes the creative part. I'm going to take a stick that I find in my yard and a rubber band. I'm going to take the rubber band, and once I line up my holes with my paper and my cover, I'm going to poke the tip of the rubber band through the top hole. You may need someone to help. It's hard to get fingers to work right. See how I just have that poking out? 
And then I'm gonna take my stick, slide it in that little loop I made with my rubber band, just like that. See how I slid it through? Now I'll take my rubber band on the back side, put it through the other set of holes. Maybe slide my rubber band up to help me there, or my stick up. Make sure my holes my, in my paper and my covers are lined up. Make my rubber band stretch. Push the stick through. And now I have a really cool looking book for all my nature observations. Now it really looks like it belongs in nature with that stick there. And I have all the things I need for my book for next time I go out and I can start drawing and making my own sketchbook like Ren did in our book. So I could make get my markers and make my cover. I might say, put my name here, Jackie's. Nature book. Nature book. And then with my other markers, I could draw pictures of things from nature, like trees, chipmunks, leaves, flowers, worms, birds, anything I think of. And then each time I go out, I can put down what I noticed, just like Ren did. If I notice a bunch of trees together and call it a stand of trees and draw that and label it, it's important to write the words to go with what you notice so that you'll always have a record of what you observed. You could put the date on there. You could write anything about it. You could look it up when you get home, have your parents or caregiver help you find information about whatever you're curious about, or you could just write a poem about it or make up a story or just write a sentence about why you thought it was interesting. It's all up to you because it's your own nature notebook that you just made. And just a, in addition, if the words from the cereal box or pizza box are, are taking away from your book, you can just cover them with paper and draw more pictures and designs over them. You don't have to leave them like that. It's all up to you. But this is a great way to get outside and think about the world around you and notice all those flowers and all the birds flying around and the butterflies and enjoy the world right outside your front door. So if you liked this book, you can go to your library and see if they have it or other books about going outside and taking a hike. This one is called The Hike by Allison Farrell. And you can try to check it out at your library. Have fun.